Whoa, 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 what is going on, my, my homies? Hearthstone, yeah, what up? And today I will tell you guys the story and show you some gameplay on how I got to Legend. Now, getting to Legend is pretty much the one goal people have in Hearthstone. You not just ask for the best deck to play, but for the best deck that can get you to Legend. The question I get the most is not if a deck is good or bad, but if a deck is Legend viable. So I thought, let's just go to Legend and I can tell you how to get there, give you some tips and tricks in an upcoming video, but show you how I did it before, so you know that I actually know what I'm talking about. Which also means story time. Every single month in Hearthstone, the season gets reset, which means everybody's going to start again at Bronx 10. But depending on the rank you got last season, you get additional bonus stars, so it makes it easier to rank up again. Last season I was Legend, and I got a total of 10 bonus stars, meaning that up until Diamond 5, I get additional stars for my win. So just getting back to Diamond 5 is easy. I just gotta play the game even with a negative win rate. If I had something like a 40% win rate, I would still get to Diamond 5. But then it stops. You don't get additional bonus stars. So from Diamond 5 to Legend, you still have to win 15 to 16 games. But first, let's go back. It is October 1st, the September season just got resetted, and I log into Horsner for the first time. What did it do to get back to rank 5? As just mentioned, you could play whatever. You could play a meme deck, you can play a control deck. I decided to play a fun deck, it's called Token Druid. It is probably the most aggressive deck in Hearthstone, and I think I made a video called the fast deck in Hearthstone as well, because it is exactly that. You can literally win by turn 3. But because that is not the most interesting thing to watch in a Twitch stream, I was thinking, how can I make that more interesting? And the answer is Shrek. So while I was playing back to rank 5, which took about 80 minutes, or one entire Shrek movie, now referred to as one Shrek unit, Twitch enemy watched this bald ogre rescue a princess from a tower, and then she turned into an ogre herself. Coincidence, I guess. So within one Shrek, I made it back to rank 5. It is an aggressive duck. What do I expect? It's a good duck, high win rate, you go face, you win. Now a couple days go by, and I think on the 6th of October, we had this event quest. So when you lock into Hearthstone, you get greeted with this. Play 50 cards, get a couple packs. Well, I locked into my EU account first. My EU account is more like the Warlock account slash I play golden stuff account. I don't spend money on that account, I just disenchant all the other class cards, so I can keep playing a golden Warlock deck for free. But nonetheless, I do finish my quests. I also got an 80 gold quest, so I played against somebody, I lost against somebody, got 80 Gs, opened a pack, got Nomi, got a golden card. Cool. So, what's next? Right, North America, the server I play on. And obviously, because it's an event quest, I get the exact same thing again. But in addition to just having a quest that reads play 50 cards, I also had a 100 gold quest that reads play 50 cards that cost 3 or less. And while I was already Diamond 5, I'd never really expect to be Legend or get there, because why would I? I had this idea in my mind. What if I just keep on playing Token Druid? Because the definition of a deck that is full of cards that cost 3 mana or less is Token Druid. You'd play double and begin for 0 mana, you'll play 26 cards between 1 and 2 mana, and then you play double savage draw for a 3 mana card. So every single thing you play in here is a card that costs 3 mana or less. Perfect for the quest. And to my surprise, what I didn't fully notice, I was already Diamond 3. That is because I played a couple meme decks, but I didn't lose when I played those meme decks. For example, I played the Ancient One and Druid, and I won. Now, as most of the time, I don't think that I will end up winning a bunch of games. My win rate usually is between 30 and 40% after an entire month of playing, because the decks I play are not good. But this time it's different. I play a good deck, and I'm already Diamond 3. And so I started playing the first game. And you can already see why this deck seems pretty strong. Even if you just have something like a 1-1 on your field, your Feral Gibbera, the moment you cast a spell, you get an additional 1-1 with the exact same effect. No matter what your opponent plays, unless they have a board clear or they have the board advantage, they can't really deal with anything you do. And because you also have additional buff spells, as well as cards like Voracious Reader to refill your hand, you're just overwhelming your opponent. Having cards like an Aruba Web Spinner here makes it so that your opponent can't really play any minions, because the Battlecry stuff gets increased by a lot, and the moment your hand is empty, your Voracious just draws 3 cards for you. Now while you might wonder how you end up winning in the mid or end game, it's either by using Savage Draw and going face, or if you have Ambigan and just top deck minions with good stats. Even if you mess up the order once or twice, it doesn't matter too much in here. You can actually misplay more than once, and if your opponent has bad RNG, like let's say they have Dragon Bane and they hit face, what do they really do? They fall behind on board, they play I don't know what kind of hunter, and eventually you just overwhelm them and you don't die, making it quite easy to win. But that is like a normal game. Like in many cases, you don't really get a pirate, sometimes you do, you don't always get Ambigan, sometimes you do. When you happen to have Ambigan before you play any pirate, you buff your patches and when it gets summoned from your deck, it's a 3-3, sometimes even a 5-5. And other times you just top deck patches. 
But hey, better having a 1-drop than no 1-drop, and it also summons a Brigand. Considering that the opponent not just plays a quest, but also allows us to play Voracious and buff our entire field, we can just refill our hand. Now they might play Burlock or whatever, but you can already tell that we won this game. It's barely turn 3, but the enemy already concedes. And this is how it started. I got like the first 12 cards done on my quest, so I kept on playing because I had to finish that. But we are already at rank 3 3 stars, meaning in 7 wins I would be legend. In the old system you used to be a rank 2 with 4 to 5 stars right now, which seems a lot higher than being rank 3 with 3 stars. So we are basically legend already, without even trying. And then good RNG hit me. I encounter a mage, and while I do summon patches on the first turn, and then I test how fast I can click, which by the way is horribly slow, my opponent only uses Ray of Frost, and while we buff our entire field, they just use another Ray of Frost, so we buff the entire field. And then they play Mad Scientist, and it's turn 4 on their top deck Savage Raw, and then I just go face, and they're actually dead. And it's barely turn 4. I'm actually ranked 2 now. And I'm like halfway done with my quest, so I had to keep on playing, because I still wanted to finish that. But this was going well, I mean, more than well. I'm not sure what happened, but I guess the game is just nice to me. So we kept on playing to see what we encounter next, and if our win streak keeps on being there. So we can keep on winning, and we face an even shaman. They have a totem, they have a second totem, and they're overloaded already. And then being overloaded due to lightning bloom means they can't use a maelstrom portal next turn. So what we gotta do is go white, and for whatever reason they just mess up the trait. So we use a big in, and we buff our board, and our 1-1 gibberer is like 8-8 in stats in total with the 1-1 that died. In short, the gibberer itself, it's so much value, it's better than most cards in your entire deck. You drop no Ruba, you buff your board, you go face, if your opponent has 1 minion and you have like 5, you're just winning. And every single time you draw a Voracious Reader, especially after Ambigan, the game is usually over. I mean again, it's turn 4, we draw 3 cards, we head on the board, even though we get patches, there's nothing your opponent can do. Like even if you just play normal cards starting at turn 3 or turn 4, you just drop minions without effect, you're fine. You might get reset it after it evolves into Master and Portal, but you keep on playing things. And eventually, things your opponent play can be ignored like a Sea Giant, you use your Savage Draw as always, aim face, and then it might be a slow win, but it's still a win. Almost every single deck in Wild right now doesn't play any top minions. I think in the entire time of playing this deck, from Bronx 10 to Legend, I encountered like a card to Defender. Pretty much nobody plays Taunt, so even having stuff like a Silence effect is not even needed. So even in the late game, as long as you go white and then you Savage Raw to go face, just buff your entire field and go face, you can still win. And sometimes, you have something like the Guard Opener, where you already know based on your turn 1 you're going to win that. And that happened next against the Mage. We have a Biggin, a Pirate, and Brigid in our opener, meaning we use a 0 mana spell, summon a 1 drop, and we get a 1-2, a 2-2, a 3-3, and we can also coin out a 1-2 sidekick to give our minion plus 2 health. The opponent might draw a secret, but what is a 2-3 that draws a secret against our entire bot which also costs 2 mana? To my surprise the opponent skips turn 3, so we go face and they skip turn 4 and then we go face and then they play a secret and it turned out to be ice block and I was thinking do they want to mess with me because they have reno but no they just concede. And that was weird, why did my opponent not just skip 2 turns but also just played ice block if they want to concede anyways. I still think they just wanted to play ice block into reno and top deck that but they didn't do it. And the higher my rank got, the more mages are faced. And there was another one. While I had my normal pirate opener, they coin out their fire blast, kill my 2-1. I summon some minions, buff them, they play my scientist, I buff my minions, and I thought the only way they can come back is if they have flame water and deal 3 damage AoE. So I buff my entire field again, and not a single thing dies besides the 1-1 one -one from flame water. Meaning that the entire plan of having a bot clear was useless. And they're already down to 1 on turn 4. They had to be incredibly unlucky though, for me to get not just one, but multiple AoE buffs. If I had not had all three AoE buffs, my bot would have just been gone. And Horst to me called that an outplay and pure skill. And it was kind of funny at this point, because I still wasn't trying. I still don't intend to get to Legend, but I'm already rank 1. And being 3 wins away, or like 9 losses to like rank 5 again, I think we might want to go to Legend here. And I told myself, even if I finish the quest, I will keep on playing this deck until I lose. So we kept on playing, and then we faced the Warlock. And the Warlock played the weirdest deck I have seen so far. It's like they played the old Dark Lair Warlock with self-damaging stuff, but they didn't do anything. I mean, my turn 1 already looks like that, and after they dealt some damage to their own face, 
they just lost. Like, they played something like Cobalt Librarian as well as Flame Imp and Yomunculus over and over and used to raise that. It was a really weird matchup. It's almost like they disenchanted Dark Lair and forgot to put a bark into their deck. And at this point, I was at rank 1, 2 stars, so 2 wins away. And I kept on playing. While we do face a quest mate, which is usually a good sign, we top deck patches, which is a bad sign. Then for 2 mana, they draw 3 cards, which is a bad sign. They also have one Thief and an AoE spell, which is a bad sign. And they get five cards from Mana Cyclone, which is a very bad sign. And in other words, yeah, I, I lost my first game. <sighs> Every streak comes to an end. And for me, at a rank one, two stars, the streak is over. Everything that could possibly go wrong, went wrong. Drawing patches. Your opponent gets a lot of value for free. They get a random AoE spell. Nothing I can do. But I stand true to what I said. When I lose a game, I will stop playing this. And every single time I have to make something like a 50-50 decision and I'm not sure which path I take, I ask for divine advice, you can say. It's called coin flip. If you type that into Google, you can flip a coin. And RNG told me to stop playing. So I locked out of North America, went onto EU, played some Cthulhu Warlock, and lost by playing against a friend for 80 gold. But then I flipped the coin again. Hats, Druid, coin... Okay, we should play Druid now. Just don't give me a mage. Give me something like a Warlock as an opponent that plays Zoo or whatever. Trivia question. The girl in... Uh, the girl in Ninja Turtles. What was her name? <laughs> yep, we are back. I'm not sure how that works, but if you believe in RNG and you trust Google coin flip, then yeah, uh, stuff like that apparently happens. This coin flip itself gave me a free win at rank 1. That's insane. But as insane as things can be, and as lucky as you can get, your opponent can also get lucky. So while we do face an even shaman, we not just top deck patches, but they also have Maelstrom Portal. And in other words, yeah, this game is over. It was only turn 3, but you can already tell if you play an aggressive deck, you don't need to top deck a card after another to then slowly lose when it's almost guaranteed that you lose. It's better to concede and just play the next game, as the time it will take you to lose could be an entire win. And it was time for the very first mirror match that I played. We have a begin on turn 1. We have a pirate. We get 4-5 in stats. That's Yeti stats on turn 1. People used to concede against that, unless your opponent has the exact same thing. And then already on turn 3, they have their first voracious reader, so they can refill their hand. Doesn't matter too much, we can remove that, play our own stuff. But you have to keep in mind, at the very first turn I played them big in. Meaning every single minion I top deck is great, but I top deck a spell, a spell, and another spell, which means I get absolutely no value when my opponent gets more and more minions. They also get a 4 mana 5 7 voracious reader to refill their entire hand, and the turn where I'm going to lose that is when I top deck my own voracious, so... Yeah, drawing three spells and then getting voracious four turns late. Uh, my luck kind of left me. I don't want to complain, because not just the mage who stopped playing at like turn three and four was a free win for me, but also the rogue. But bad draw ended this game, sadly. So we kept on playing. So our opener is broken. We have Jira, we have a pirate, we have a biggin. Now, the enemy had a one mana spell, the side quest that buffs minions after they summon five. On turn two, their hero power. So we remove that, and on turn 3, after they played Master for Battle, we just use Savage Draw and have Lethal. We actually have Lethal on turn 3. This match lasted 2 minutes, from the time where you started queuing until the very end. That took 2 minutes. So whenever people ask which deck you should play to Legend or to just rank up fast, play aggressive decks. If your win rate is relatively the same between a control deck and an aggressive deck, but the aggressive deck takes 2 to 5 minutes per game, and the control deck takes 10 to 20 minutes, you can play like 3 to 5 times as many games with the aggressive deck than the control deck. I might have lost the last mirror match against another druid, but this time it's different. Our opponent not just draws patches, while we don't, they also hero power on turn 2, turn 3, and on turn 4 to just waste 6 mana, I guess, making it so that they have no chance of winning. This match was almost depressing, actually. Like, when you face somebody playing the exact same deck as you do, and you know which cards they have in their deck, and all they do is hero power, which they shouldn't, you almost feel bad for the opponent's draw. But I wouldn't feel bad for being at rank 1, 2 stars. I would feel bad for being at rank 1, 3 stars and losing. But to get there, you gotta win first. And the next match was annoying and weird against the Reno Priest. We have our usual broken opener. You summon a 1-1, one, one, you get a big in, you coin, you buff your entire board, and on turn 1 already, you have 7-7 seven, seven in stats. Like, in case you didn't believe in this deck until now, it's 7-7 seven, seven on turn 1. But the opponent has not just 1 but 2 removal spells. And we summon stuff, and they top deck Breath to remove stuff. And then they use Spirit Lash to remove stuff, and then they use Zephyrus to remove stuff. But we kept on playing the cards that we top deck. Buff our stuff and go face. And we know on turn 7, there's only one thing the opponent can do, because they use Seance earlier. They can play their Zephyrus and get a 5-mana card, which should be Brawl. And if they win the Brawl, we lose. 
but they picked the Taunt Elemental, which just means they're 100% loose. Now at rank 1 and 3 stars, I was confused. Did my opponent not get offered Brawl? Like there are 3 5 mana cards my opponent got offered from Zephyrus. What are those cards that they didn't pick Brawl? And then it was time. The time where you might get too nervous. Being at rank 1 3 stars and at your final boss to legend, you become nervous. You become really, really self-conscious about any decision you make. Because you don't want to mess up. You've come so far. You don't want to drop back down to rank 5. You don't want to start losing now. You want to believe in the dark. You want to have certain cards. And you want to win the game. Final boss time. Here's how I want my opener to be. Hit a pirate. Don't drop patches. That. Wait, that's actually what I wanted. That is perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. And it's not even odd. Just try to be safe. Um, consistent. They coin. What 4-drop is there? That doesn't matter. Just to be sure. Lethal? Like, what can they do for 4 mana? If they had anything available. I think they can concede. I think I got blast. All my opponents that played that day. Starting with the mage that just stopped playing things. To the rogue that just instantly conceded. To the priest that didn't pick raw. And now to the guy who plays Librem Pure Paladin at rank 1. Thank you. Now, because I do stream live on Twitch, I never know if all of those matches that I play are actually against random opponents, or if people try to Q-snipe me. At least at rank 1, I'm not sure if all my opponents or all my matches are random. What if my opponent was Legend and exactly tried to snipe me and let me win? What if my opponents just recognized my name, saw me playing a real deck at a higher rank, and wanted to be included in a YouTube video by just conceding, or by just playing bad? And if you want to see any of those games, but in longer without me commentating over them, we have a second channel called Daily Solemn or Solemn Daily. I might have switched the name around. This channel is basically how this channel here used to be. Where we have daily uploads, daily gameplay, just me in the game and you guys in Twitch chat. Where, by the way, we also stream it. Maybe you want to say hello, maybe you don't. Maybe you want to leave a like, maybe you want to sub. All those things are up to you. But until then, take care. <laughs>